Hello everyone, good afternoon and welcome to this seminar, this session all about leading in worship. My name is Henry. And I'm Ben. Uh, we are Ixus worship leaders um, and we just really, really want to encourage you today as worship leaders or people who love worship. Absolutely. Uh, as we film right now, it's March 2021 um, and the UK is just beginning to come out of lockdown, um, the second major lockdown or the third, depends how you're counting. Um, it's possible to lose count um, and I think we all feel a bit of a weariness uh, at this point in our journeys and probably not least if we're worship leaders. Um, we might be struggling to know uh, what's next, what's around the corner and how um, are we going to move out of lockdown, back into our churches, what's that gonna look like for us and for our ministries? So uh, we really are wanting this session now just to be an encouragement to you. So we really hope that you are encouraged. And we really, really need you. We wanna say that worship leaders, you are so valuable and you're so precious. And more than anything else, we want worship leaders who carry that anointing from God. Right around this whole theme of our conference about fresh oil. We wanna see the fresh oil of God's anointing on your life, and on our lives as we worship together. So we're gonna take some time now just to begin to unpack what it means to lead in worship, what it means to be worship leaders for Jesus. When we start to talk about worship leading, the first um, person that we really can learn from is Moses. It talks about Moses uh, when he first goes up the mountain um, and is spending time with God, that it, he talked to God face to face, just as a man talks to his friend, just as me and Ben were just talking just then. Um, and that is amazing because that established a real personal connection between Moses and God. But then later on, as we go forward and the whole camp of Israel are camped together, it says that Moses went off to the tent of meeting to meet with God, to be in the presence of God. And everyone else came out of their tents, watched him go and worship from where they were. So one of the, the key things that we wanna get hold of as worship leaders, if we're gonna be real anointed worship leaders, anointed with the oil of the spirit, is that we really need to be pursuing and going for the presence of God. We want to be calling on the presence of God. For Moses to worship meant to go and be in God's presence. And for that presence to feel like spending time with a friend. That's one of the first things for us as anointed worship leaders, to really know that deep friendship with God and to seek to be just like Moses in the way we sing, in the way we lead, in the things we pray, in the stuff we say, to be going forward into the presence of God and drawing our brothers and sisters in the church along with us. Worship leading is God's presence. Now, as uh, worship leaders, we have a great privilege and we also often feel that what we have is a great responsibility um, to lead people in worship um, corporately. Now, that may feel like even more of a pressure uh, as we come back into gathering together with other believers. And it's something that uh, will feel unfamiliar and strange because actually it's something we haven't done for a long time. Um, and uh, so how are we going to deal with that? pressure of trying to remember what it's like to speak to a, a gathering, however large or small, of people to try to encourage them together to worship. And I think for me, uh, one of the points that I hold on to um, as I consider this is to remember um, that actually as we worship, we're worshiping within the life of God himself and that there's um, not something we have to do um, in and of ourselves, only by ourselves, which is gonna help other people to worship. Otherwise, we'd no, never get anywhere and there would be no true spirit life in our churches, would there? Um, but the fact is the Holy Spirit is gonna come alongside and help us in our role, especially as we uh, get going in it again, perhaps after months and months of not leading people in worship. Um, and uh, as the Holy Spirit comes alongside to help us, um, he's gonna show us Jesus and let's look for Jesus right in the middle of our congregations as we gather together again. And we can see him in one another. We can see his life. We can see what he's been doing. Um, <clears throat> these are the two hands of God, the Holy Spirit and uh, Jesus. Um, and as we see Jesus, 
we'll see him doing what scripture says he's doing, which is worshipping the Father. In the midst of the congregation, I will sing your praises, it says in Hebrews, quoting the Psalms. I think it's the Psalms. And um, uh, so we can, by the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, we can just look for Jesus in the congregation. And as we look at him, uh, all our attention and uh, the attention of uh, everyone that we're leading in this way can just go to the Father and just, we can just enjoy the Father God together. His love, his light, his beauty, his grace, his openness towards us through Jesus. Um, and as we do that, that's just going to really renew our life together. So don't feel that the pressure's all on you um, because it's not. Jesus stands in the middle of the congregation leading the worship. You can get caught up in that by the Holy Spirit, helping others to see him and be led towards the Father together. There's worship all over the New Testament. And as Jesus sits and talks with that one woman, she uh, thrust, throws a question at Jesus that must have, would have been really tricky if it was one of us. But she says, uh, my ancestors, they said that we should worship here on the mountain, but yours say we should worship down there uh, in the city and in the temple. What's the right thing? And Jesus uh, throws the whole thing open. And he says that the Father is looking for worshipers in spirit and in truth. And if we're going to be worship leaders, we need to be leading in such a way that we are helping people to flow in the spirit and to be built up and fed with the truth. The spirit experience in their own lives, which is something very subjective and personal and often beyond our description, but then the very concrete and powerful dynamic of the truth. And uh, we've got to bring those two things together. We've got to allow those things which are very subjective and experiential to get woven together with the things that are very solid and true and real in the way we lead our songs, in the way we help people to go on a journey through worship. They might arrive uh, to a meeting on Zoom or in church and uh, have really lost sight of the truth of who Jesus is. That can happen so fast in people's lives. And actually one of our jobs as a worship leader is not to just tell people the truth, but to allow them space to sing the truth and to allow it to sink deeply into their hearts. Perhaps they're feeling incredibly dry and they need a new watering with the Holy Spirit. And we want to encourage you to make sure that your worship leading is drenched in the Holy Spirit, covered in the Holy Spirit, that you're giving space for people to commune with the Holy Spirit as part of their worship. Spirit and in truth. Let's let that come into our worship leading in every possible way. One of my favorite um, examples of the experience of worship, and I guess one of the things we really miss uh, about not being together in the same place is that moment on uh, what we call Palm Sunday, when Jesus arrives in Jerusalem and he's riding a donkey and there's a whole procession and movement of his disciples and followers who are flowing forward and singing and declaring about who he is and the crowd join in and get really excited and there's this wonderful sense of everyone being invited, everyone being welcomed to join the procession uh, of adoring Jesus and uh, I just I love that and I think it's got such an image for us as worship leaders that, uh, that we perhaps as those who stand up to lead worship could see ourselves as those close disciples to Jesus who uh, got the procession going, <laughs> who got the donkey started and uh, began to lift up Jesus, to make much of Jesus, to lift him up with a big noise and with a party to welcome others in. And, you know, I'm a real fan of partying. I love parties. And actually, as worship leaders, we've got to be those that love a party about Jesus, a celebration about Jesus. And uh, it, it seems so inconceivable now. Uh, if you perhaps look back through some photos uh, that you have to, to partying a couple of years ago and you see people and sometimes in your mind, you're suddenly thinking, oh my goodness, they're standing so close together. <laughs> but actually we as worship leaders, as we come out of this lockdown and we can get back together and, and come within two meters of one another again, let's allow our worship leading to have a celebration about Jesus in it, a kind of experiential celebration 
that involves, well, I mean, it can involve branches if you like. Grab them and put them around your church if you want. Just find any kind of experiential way to allow people to come into the party and the joy and the wonder of knowing that the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is here. It's part of our role. It's part of our privilege, part of our joy as worship leaders to allow people to join the procession, the spiritual procession of bringing more and more of the kingdom of Jesus in to our world. Hallelujah. Are you ready to party worship leaders? Let's do it. When it comes to biblical examples of worship leaders, one of the classic characters that we often draw from is of course David, a worshiper and a leader. And we see those two roles very much fused in his life in a way which can encourage us. Um, and just, I was just reflecting just a few moments ago in talking with Henry um, that David had been through a massive wilderness season, just like perhaps we have, all of us, um, as we've been in various stages of lockdown um, around the world um, and in the UK in our own churches, not able to meet, not able to lead worship for our congregations. And so I was thinking, what did David do at that point um, at the end of a long season of being in the wilderness, um, what happened there? And uh, I was reminded that he is at a kind of crunch point. Um, Saul is still hunting him. Um, he, David is still kind of out on the sticks with his uh, ragtag band of uh, people um, <laughs> trying to make things work out. But he's running away. He's not the king. He's not, he's not seen God's promises fulfilled yet in his life. Um, and just at that point, just at crunch point, the Amalekites come and they make a raid and they take away David and his army's possessions and their wives and their children. And this is devastating for David and uh, his men just are out for him. They want to kill him. It's all looking bad. What does David do just at this point, at this, the end of this long wilderness? He strengthens himself in the Lord his God and then he seeks God. You can read about this um, in 1 Samuel 30. He seeks God uh, with the priest um, together and God tells him what to do and they go and recover the spoils. Um, then Saul is defeated and then we see David does become king. Um, and so I thought, yes, that is absolutely key for us at this time uh, where we are, where we might have been through a long wilderness, each of us. Let's strengthen ourselves in the Lord our God at this time. We will see um, fulfillment of God's promises when we come out of this wilderness season together. So we're just going to uh, reflect together a little bit more about worship during lockdown and coming out of lockdown um, to help you process it and, and think about it for yourselves. So Henry, uh, how's this season been for you? Um, we, we all probably have lots of reflections on it. What, what are some of your thoughts as you've had to lead worship online and do things completely differently from how we used to? Yeah, yeah I think it, it has been really strange. One of the, the weirdest things is, is trying to sort of lead worship into a, a camera or a, a laptop, <laughs> which has just felt really weird. And uh, just, just um, the, the main thing that, it's just really hard it's just you can't hear everyone <laughs> and uh, one of the, the the lovely things about leading worship in a congregation is is hearing that that sound of voices together um, and what that expresses and, and means and i think for me it's it's just been really hard <laughs> yeah. trying to lead worship where, where all you can hear is your own voice um, and that sense of kind of just not really um having all those same kind of uh, easy pointers to know oh this is where we should go next and being able to hear that from people. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, I still remember the first um, online meeting that we did uh, when I uh, had to leave worship um, and I'd got the computer and the, my microphones and my guitar plugged in, everything all set up quite nicely, I thought, um, so that it would uh, sound good and, you know, people could kind of feel like, yeah, they were being drawn into something. But um, as soon as I began, um, I just felt almost kind of lost, you know, because um, who do you look at? There's no one to look at. Um, you're just kind of looking at a screen and hoping that your tech works and um, you're kind of trying to peer in these little squares, see if anyone's waving at you like something, something's wrong. 
um, and it's uh, a complete shift from what we were used to. Um, so we've all kind of known that sinking feeling um, and perhaps we've even got a little bit used to it um, or developed some ways of kind of coping with it. Um, I mean, perhaps we can learn from those, but I think um, fundamentally, uh, yeah, this has been a, a difficult challenge for all of us. Yeah. I think that you're right, that sense of where there isn't that interaction with people there has to be a new way. One of the new things that I think we can start to really learn out of this lockdown time is that when you're worshiping, you really, you're having to go in faith. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you, if you agree, but you've got to really um, dig in uh, and, and, and say, Lord, where are you going? Where, yeah. where, what's the direction in this worship time? And um, I think if we want to come out of lockdown in um, having, going forward, rather than just thinking, let's get back to where we were, let's say, Lord, where are you taking us now? I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of, the, one of the first things is to say, okay, you know, every time I'm leading worship, I want to be on my knees in that sense of desperation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's, it, you know, you can get good at it, can't you? You can get good at it. I don't know about you, but I, I've got, you know, ways that I can think, okay, you know, I know, I know which direction I could go in. I'm playing guitar there. <laughs> Thinking that yeah. that's what I could do now. And, uh, and I can lean on myself rather than leaning on the spirit. I, yeah. yeah, so... What else, what else do we think we can learn from, from this time, from, from lockdown, worship times? Yeah, well, um, I think perhaps just one of the slightly, well, maybe very actually positive lessons we can draw um, has been uh, taken from trying to encourage people to worship in their own homes, which is what we've all had to do, you know. <laughs> so I've said every single time, right where you are in your home, you can worship and um, you can lift up your voice. We're lifting our voices together even though we're each in our own homes. Um, and that reminds us um, of the very profound thing that we learn from the New Testament, um, which is that uh, God's presence and the place to worship him is no longer found in um, one specific locale um, that we all have to go to. Um, and uh, though, you know, for many of us, our, our congregations don't even meet in church buildings perhaps we already have a sense of that if we're just gathering in a school or something um, that does remind us of that as well but this experience of worshiping at home is all the more powerful for reminding us that God can meet us right where we are and actually we are the temple of the living God um, in our bodies and um, where we are gathered together in his name um, there is no geographic place now uh, where God says that's where you have to go to worship um, actually in Christ, he said, we are the temple yeah, of the yeah. living God. And so individuals and families have been able to experience that. And hopefully we all have and learned to worship in our homes uh, with those we live with um, and in our own spaces together. Um, and so coming back into our corporate gatherings, um, perhaps we can bring that reminder with us um, that though we gather in a place on a Sunday morning or whatever time of the week, um, that it's not the place that is special. It's our gathering together and being God's people, um, that means that God dwells there with us. Yeah. So Henry, um, it might have been a while, um, <laughs> so you might need to remind yourself, but um, we're coming back towards actually being able to worship in a room together with some other people. Yeah. Uh, what will be some of the things uppermost in your mind as you do that, as you're standing up yeah, there yeah. Uh, with a group of people? I think, um, yeah, it is, it, it, it feels, feel strange <laughs> trying to imagine it and and gathering together um i think there there in a sense there probably will be a lot of joy in some people just feeling um wow this is great to be back together again they really love it but i think for some people that it, it might be quite strange and uh, in a sense the um the, the vulnerability that that there is in singing alongside a brother and sister raising our hands <laughs> Um, closing our eyes, all those different ways that we commune with God in a, in a corporate and, and personal way, all, all blended together. Um, we're going to just need a lot of kindness <laughs> yeah. and a lot of tenderness. And got to think about really carefully about what kind of songs you might choose first <laughs> to sing, you know, um, what's going to be the right song. It's got to be something that really puts Jesus right at the center. Um, it's got to be that sense of drawing people in rather than just uh, diving forward, <laughs> rather than just shooting straight on. Um, you know, as Roger's been sharing about the priests and the oil of anointing on, on their lives, there was a journey that they went through, you know, and um, I don't know what you choose, Ben, but thinking about a song 
uh, at the beginning, you know, that, that really does just, just, just declare about the power of the cross and the forgiveness that we might have. And yeah, I think, I think that's, that's probably the first things I'd be thinking of. Yeah. 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 I think, um, I'll, uh, be thinking about not just the songs that we sing, um, but the other acts that we can um, do in our worship which draw us together and that remind us that we are one body and one people together. Um, things like taking communion, um, however we might be doing that initially, uh, and yeah. just taking up an offering, you know, allowing people if they want to, um, if they've got gifts to give, um, to do that and reminding them that that is an act of corporate worship as well. Yeah. Um, because these are all signifiers as well as singing together um, of our life together and to enjoy those yeah, um, yeah. especially as they'll be kind of fresh and new experiences yeah, and to, beautiful. to intentionally use each one um, in our times of worship together something we often used to do in uh, Lee Green congregation was encourage everyone to walk around the room to greet one yeah. another and uh, that's something that again seems so strange mm. <laughs> but I can't wait to get back to yeah. it and that sense of uh, of being very aware um, of one another and, and uh, the fact that, that when, we, when we sing and when we're lifting up our voice, uh, it's, it's really uh, able to impart faith to the, the brother or sister either side of us, in front of us and behind us. Um, I'll be really looking for that as well, looking forward to that. Um, and, and I think a, a, another thing that, that I can't wait for is to uh, that, that sense of uh, prophetic play talks in, in, in One Chronicles um, about the, the prophetic musicians who were playing on their instruments and, and ministering to the Lord. And um, it wasn't so much that, that they would play and that there was always an interpretation, but there was just a constant flow of prophetic playing that just ministered to the Lord. Um, and I think being in the midst of that, I can't wait to get back to that. <laughs> I just want to share with you a song um, which may help us in our minds fuse together some of these themes that we've been thinking about um, during this time in this seminar. Uh, thinking about our drawing together and um, the kinds of songs we sing together to encourage one another with. Thinking about making declarations about who God is and what is true. Um, and reminding us that the Spirit is present with us. This is a day of salvation, which you may well know. Um, but let's just take a little look at it as something that might help us in our corporate worship together, especially regathering together. Um, so the, the chorus is fairly simple and it makes declarations um, about truth that the kingdom of God is here, as Jesus said, when we gather together, that's what we believe is true. The kingdom of God is with us um, and he's here by his spirit um, and that this is the day of salvation. So here's the chorus. This is the day of salvation, the kingdom of God is here. This is the hour of His favor, His spirit and power are here. This is the day, this is the day of salvation, the kingdom of God is here. Verses, we're kind of speaking to one another in uh, our time of worship together. So we're encouraging one another, which is part of our worship and our corporate life together, saying, When you call, he will answer. When you turn, he will welcome. In your sorrow, he will comfort. Turn your again. Now this bridge is an invitation to come, to 
to the Lord and uh, once again that reminds us that as we worship together we can just invite one another come in to the Lord's presence come let us worship the Lord come as you are come as you that song um, may be useful to you in your gathering together again or perhaps just it reminds you of some of the things that uh, we're thinking about in preparing for our worship times together so be blessed as you prepare your songs as you tune up your guitars and get ready to sing together and worship together with God's people uh, I'm afraid our time is is come to an end now. Um, it's been really great to just spend this little bit of time with you thinking about leading um, in worship. Again, more important than anything else is for there to be real anointing flowing in our worship. And we really need a fresh anointing, fresh oil to come on us as worship leaders. We don't want to go back and, and just try to recreate what we had before. But as worship leaders going forward, um, we want to be learning from what God's done in us through this time and uh, we want to know a fresh anointing resting on us you're not leading worship because you're a good musician or a good singer but because god really needs us to worship together with one voice um so let's be real anointed worship leaders amen yeah i agree yeah uh, we want to encourage you um, god has called you and blessed you and gifted you um, with something to help the body of christ um, so just receive as we pray um, now. Yeah, let's pray. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you that there is uh, an oil of anointing, Lord, on worship leaders as they step out for you. I just want to pray for all my brothers and sisters who are listening and watching to this time, Lord Jesus, that you would encourage them and strengthen them. Lord, I want to pray, uh, Lord, for a wonderful oil uh, of anointing, Lord, for the oil of blessing on their lives, the oil of joy, uh, to be able to break through some of the heaviness and sadness that can often rest on your people, Lord, in such hard times. Lord Jesus, let there be fresh oil and fresh anointing in Jesus' name. Amen, yeah. Lord, let that fresh oil uh, pour down on our gatherings together, yes. like it says in Psalm 133, um, how good and pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity and there's fresh oil there so we pray that um, when we do come back together in our gatherings together there will be more of your oil just pouring down your holy spirit to really anoint those times and anoint us as worship leaders and anoint the congregation um, that together we may uh, more and more enjoy your spirit enjoy your presence um, and be caught up into god's life together and sent out in his power in jesus name amen Amen. 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 Again, thanks so much for joining us. Be blessed as you lead worship. Enjoy the rest of the conference or, you know, if you're watching this in a few years time, I'm afraid the conference already finished. Godspeed. Bye-bye. See ya.